Hello and welcome to this short video with me, Jason Evans. I'm the National Wikimedian at the National Library of Wales and I'm interested in all things open access, open data and digital technologies in libraries. And today I want to talk to you about deep fake technology and cultural heritage. Is it a blessing or a curse? And rather than writing a blog as I would normally do, I thought I would try vlogging. So deep fake is everywhere. No longer can we simply trust our eyes, as clever software and AI technology enables all of us to manipulate video and sound to distort the truth. So is this technology a curse on the cultural heritage sector, traditionally the bastions of truth and knowledge, or can this tech be hijacked to engage people with our digital collections in new ways? A popular genealogy website recently launched a new feature which allows people to reanimate their long-lost relatives, creating lifelike short films from old photographs, with amazing results. And this really got me thinking. Deep fake and fake news seems incompatible with libraries and other cultural heritage institutions. Libraries exist to give access to knowledge, to truth, and fake videos clearly present a threat to this. Many will remember the Queen dancing on her desk on Christmas Day, and we obviously need to avoid these fake videos becoming part of the historic record, if only to avoid confusing the life out of future historians. And sadly, well, I will never be able to unsee that. However, the technology is only going to get better, and will sadly be used in all sorts of devious ways in the years to come. So perhaps we should be using it ourselves to educate about the power and the risks of deep fake. And in doing so, we can utilize this tech to encourage creative engagement with our collections, to tell stories and to share our knowledge. So within a couple of hours of looking around, I had discovered a number of apps which allowed me to animate photos and paintings and to generate speech from text, even in Welsh. And this makes it super easy for anyone to reuse our collections, even if the sole purpose is creating a funny video or meme. I also found some free open source tools which make it fairly easy for anyone to animate still images based on a video of their own movements and expressions. And with this, I was able to produce a couple of roughly edited uh, short videos for items in our collection. The first one uses my own voice and movements in order to animate the photo so that a rugby great of the past can tell his own life story. My name's Edward Morgan. Everybody calls me Teddy. And most people remember me because I played for Wales in one of the most historic games in our history. I scored the winning try in our game over the All Blacks in 1905. And the second video uses my movements and open access sound bites to bring this watercolour painting from our collection to life. As soon as this technology is applied to historic images like this, it becomes less of a threat. These examples are clearly not real, um, and yet they still serve a really valuable purpose. There is still potential for history to be distorted, of course. After all, we are literally putting words in mouths. But when carefully managed by knowledgeable experts, this increasingly accessible technology can perhaps help us bring the past to life, to make history more accessible, to serve as a cautionary tale not to trust everything we see and hear. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and follow down below, um, and maybe I'll make another video soon. Thanks for watching.